the highways that you drove and it will animate all the way from the south to the north of Spain and allow you to use that in the, uh, the production. That's a very handy little tool called Painting Creator. The next one is a sound mixer. We have a sound mixer. We, we can obviously do stereo sound left and right, but we also support AC3 and surround. So we give you a little living room view that you can actually move the listener around in the living room and give this surround capability to your video. You'll need to output surround, obviously, when you go to burn or create a file. And you'll also need to use, if you want, a number of tracks for audio to be able to have that surround capability. And finally, Instant Project. And I'll get into Instant Project in a, in, a, in a couple of minutes. I wanted to show you a couple of more features within the timeline that you'll find very time-saving. So in this case, I have this clip, for instance, of these geese. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to not just uh, use this uh, full clip. I can go in here, as I showed you earlier, uh, go and scrub left and right and change my in and out points. But what I can also do is have a really neat feature called multi-trim. If I right-click on the clip, and I go to multi-trim video, okay, it will bring up a multi-trim dialog. And you'll notice that it's a preview dialog, just like normal. I can hit play here, and here we have the geese floating through the pond. But instead of just being able to trim the front and the back of the clip, the in and the out, I can go in and select pieces of that clip to use in the production. Now, why do you think this is important? If if I have a camera and I'm shooting long, long clips, say for instance I shoot 30 minutes at one shot and I want to be able to have pieces of that clip, it's pretty time consuming to go in there and split and cut and split and cut and delete. And Greg, I can hear you breathing. <laughs> so, so do so. I'm going to remute myself. Man. I, was, I, was, I, was, I unmuted myself so I could remind you these were in fact Canada geese, but then you, you were back on the geese track so I figured it was okay. Okay, there you go. So in any case, uh, so we have these uh, geese on the pond. And what I can do now is I can just hit play. And if I use these triggers on the, on the, on the uh, interface, this left and right bracket, I can go in and select individual parts of the clip. And these are a number of parts. I can also use F3 and F4 on my keyboard. So let me just go in here and hit play. And I'll say in, out, in, out, in, out in, out, so on and so forth. So as you'll notice here, I've got these different clips right here that are from the same clip. Very, very, very fast way of putting video together because if you have really long clips, you can go in here and find the pieces that you really like and be able to go in and adjust them. And now I can go in and grab the left and the right slide here, these handles on the right and left right and side, and, and really tweak that clip to make it exactly the, the distance, the, the duration I want. Once I'm done, you'll notice down in the tray here, these are uh, segments of that clip that I've identified that I want to use within my uh, video production. Once I hit OK, those clips will reveal themselves in my timeline. So here I have those four clips that I made from that one clip. This is extremely quick way of doing video editing. So if you want to uh, go in and really identify clips very, very quickly, stay creative without having to sort of really dig into split, splitting tools and trimming tools, this is a very good way of doing it. You'll notice that uh, while I was showing you that, I went over to this right side. We do have a zoom in, zoom out of the timeline, which is pretty standard, and we have a zoom all. I just wanted to uh, outline that so you get to see. Our timeline has got the time code in the top here, which is uh, quite handy. You get to see everything you're doing. You'll notice that as I scrub, the time code changes both up there and also the position and the, the duration of the, uh, of the project itself. Another area that really uh, helps is uh, an area that we have called markers. So I can go in here and I can add a marker. So if I click on this time, you'll notice that there's a marker right there. And say in this case here, I want it, I, if I have a long production, say it's 15 minutes long and I have many, many different segments that I'm trying to sort of remember uh, what each segment's all about, what I can do here is go into this marker, sorry about that, and just sort of apply it to the timeline and allow me to jump around through the, uh, through the, through the cues. So if I go in here, I can go in and say geese. And now when I, when I float around through my timeline, you'll notice there that that marker now says geese. So you can actually jump around your timeline and search around for the different markers. So this also allows you to go very, very quickly. 
you scrub there. So let me open a project that I have had uh, before. Let me put one here. I'll just open this project. Uh, one area, too, is uh, if you're video editing uh, on uh, uh, older computers or on notebooks that may not have the power of a higher-end desktop station, uh, we do have something that allows you to scale the video editing. In, inside of uh, Video Studio, we have acceleration for Intel and AMD uh, hardware and uh, the graphics cards and the, and the CPUs. But if your computer is not that quick, we can allow you to work, still work in high definition without lag. One way of doing that is using a thing called Smart Proxy. So here we have Smart Proxy. What Smart Proxy does is it will reduce the, the video clips into a more manageable bit rate for your computer. So if you have an older computer, you can knock the bit rate down. So as you're working on your video, it's still very fluid, but the files are not so big. Now, when you go to burn or output, we will use the original files and conform them to the final output. So there's no resolution, uh, 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 resolution change or anything like that uh, within your output. It just makes it a lot easier to work on less powerful machines. So in this project here, I have a number of things happening. I have a, a little profile of a uh, saxophone, middle, middle school saxophone player. And I'm just showing some of the effects that we have within Video Studio. So the first thing I have here is I have a graphic with the saxophone coming on, drawing on, and a title that says My Sax. So the saxophone drawing on is very, very, quite, very simple. So let me delete this one, and we'll replicate it uh, that we did before. Let me just take that off. I have the saxophone graphic right here. So I'll just drag the saxophone graphic to my timeline, and I'll shorten it up to wherever I want. And so you can see there, there's a saxophone graphic. It is a PNG file. And what that means is it has 32 bits. Eight of those, 24 of those bits are color. So in this case, the, the, uh, the black. And then eight bits of that is alpha channel, which means degree of transparency. So in this case, I have a transparent background. The original graph, you'll notice, has uh, the ping file is designated as white as the background. But that white is actually an alpha, alpha channel with transparency. So here I have my saxophone. Now I wanted to add an effect to the saxophone so it draws on. Popular effect a lot of people use. So I'll go to my Effects tab, and I will go to Auto Sketch, this sketching piece, and I'll just drop that effect onto my saxophone. Now as I scrub through here, you'll notice that it draws on, but it's drawing on from white, because that's the default of Auto Sketch. What I can do is I double click on that clip and you'll notice now the clip attributes area opens up. Now the clip attributes area is a place where you can adjust positioning of your clip, the alignment of your clip, and a number of different sort of filters. You'll notice when I dragged auto sketch onto this clip, it automatically added auto sketch to the filter tree. And this is this area right here in the, in the UI. So the filter tree is very interesting because what you can do is you can add multiple filters and make your own look. So this is a very neat uh, capability. You're not constrained to only using our filter definitions. You can make your own filters by arranging them differently in the tree in different orders and in different uh, settings. So in case here I have auto sketch, if I open up and customize this filter on this clip, you'll notice that if I scrub through this keyframer here, you can see there it is drawing on. I can change a number of things. I can change the color, for instance, of the pen. And now as it, as it draws on, you'll notice, as I scrub through here, my fingers are pretty fat on this uh, mouse. And you'll see there, it's drawing on in blue, and then it goes to black. You'll notice it goes to black at the end here because this key keyframe is, is, has the color black on it. So go here. Now this is a, uh, a keyframeable environment. So you can change these things throughout this area. You can add keyframes and you can change variables on each keyframe. So let me go back to black because that's my production. That's where I was having my production. So that's my auto sketch. Now I still want to get rid of that white there. What I can do is we support chroma keying. So let me go into chroma key. I'll apply the chroma key option, and white has already been selected. So you'll notice here that here's a sample of the saxophone, and the saxophone in the preview window automatically now has been chroma keyed out. 
if I wanted to, I can just select on the eyedropper and I can 